this is very deep. It'll be showing you how demons work and what you have to do to get rid of them. But the, it starts with a little skit. So listen to the whole video because there are different examples that will help some of you understand more clearly. Demons feed off of our garbage. You must get rid of your trash for them to flee and for you to break free for yourselves. <laughs> so you think you're going to get rid of me? Really? No, 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 no. Because you see, I am very, very hungry. And you have everything at your table that makes me very, very happy. So if you think you're going to get rid of me, think again. Because you have not cleaned off your table. And as long as your food and my food is on the table, I'm going to show up for dinner, for lunch, and breakfast, and in between snacks, no matter how much you think you're going to get rid of me. Your little sins, your little desires, and all those people that you're not ready to let go of, and all those extracurricular activities that you're not willing to stop engaging in or at the dinner table. So, yes, I'm going to feed. Thank you. Pat with Pat's two cents. I want to share some things that a lot of us don't think about. Um, a lot of times we allow those things in our lives or we let things slide or we don't confront issues that we know we need to deal with, but we just don't feel like it because sometimes it hurts too much to deal with some things. But let's say this. Let me tell you a little story. You know, I'm good for those stories. Maybe you'll see what I mean. Years ago when I twisted my ankle, the ambulance had to take me in. And I ended up getting a cast on it. And the doctor told me that once he took the cast off, I would have to flex it, put heat, put coal, do all that, and work it so that it can heal as well as possible. Well, one thing we've learned in biology in certain types of classes that when blood rushes to an area, it's something about the life-giving blood that helps the wound heal quicker. So what I did after they took the cast off, my ankle was very painful, but I would go to Jack LaLanne's back in the day when those gyms were still open. And I would get into the hot tub and the water would be bubbling all around. That in and of itself would hurt my ankle so bad I could barely take the movement. But I knew that my ankle needed the massage. And that was the only massage I could stomach at the time. You know, something can hurt you so bad it could almost make you uh, feel like you're about to regurgitate. So here I am putting my ankle in the hot tub over and over and over for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Got to the point where I started inching it over to the jet where the water rushed even harder. And I got to the point where it took me about a year, believe it or not, before I could actually put my ankle directly in the immediate force of the jet. And after I was at that point, then while it was in the water, I would flex my ankle more and more as time went on, even before I was able to put it in front of the jet. I would begin to flex my ankle more and more. So by the time I could hold my ankle in front of the jet without feeling any pain, that was about two years down the road. But guess what? After doing all that, in spite of the pain, it eventually got rid of the pain altogether. And after all these decades that have gone by, I have no issues with my ankle. It healed perfectly. 
But look at all the time, the effort, the extra hours, the pain, the everything I had to put in to getting that ankle healed to the point where it would have no more negative residual effects. No arthritis, no stiffness, no pain when it's going to rain, none of that. Well, let me share this with you. Some of you want to be delivered by God from the demons that have held you down, that have had you bound, that have had you tied up in knots, that have pulled your coat strings and moved you like puppets. Listen, some of the things that are necessary for deliverance from the control and oppression of demons is number one, confession, honesty. Number two, obedience. Number three, you must continue to continue to continue to resist the devil. Because the Bible says if you resist the devil, he will flee. So, I want you to hear this little story about a skunk in his backyard. Check this out. This skunk came around, came out of hibernation. Frank Hammond had garbage in his yard. It was covered, but the skunk made his way in, tore one of the bags, and began feeding on a, an old turkey carcass. Now, this is the crazy part. Why did that skunk have every right to be in that garbage feeding off of that turkey? Because it was still there. That skunk had the right to survive the best way he could. Part of nature, right? Well, here's the issue with you and me. If you have something in you, on you, around you, if you're being in an atmosphere or around other people or around activities or involved in activities or even as simply desiring activities that you know is diametrically opposed to the ways of God, then you must understand the demons that don't want to let you go have a right to hang on. Because just like the skunk, the demon has every right to hang around where he is being fed. And if whatever you are struggling with is feeding that demon, that demon does not have to go anywhere until you finally decide to obey God at any cost, to crucify your flesh at any cost, to do or die, so to speak. And once you have made up your mind, that skunk, that demon, that stronghold will be broken, baby, and you will finally get rid of your oppression. Amen?